when we're looking at what all of this actually means. Um, let's look at neon as an example. I'm going to not use the shortcut because it wouldn't help us just to write neon in brackets. Um, for neon, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The small numbers on top are telling us a total number of electrons. So neon, atomic number is 10. That means it normally has 10 electrons. And where those 10 electrons are, 2 plus 2 is 4, plus another 6, 10 electrons. What the numbers up front mean, they represent the coefficients, represent the shell, which is sometimes called the energy level. Shell is sometimes called the energy level. The S and the P, we call those subshells, um, and they're not going to be, they're not something I'm going to be able to draw for you. Um, but just think of them as a more specific area of the actual shell. A picture that might help. For neon, let's say this is its nucleus. The first shell is the shell closest to the nucleus. And in neon, the, anything with a coefficient of 1 is the first shell. There are two electrons in that shell. You may have learned, like in middle school, that the first shell holds two electrons. That's because in this first row, all we have is the S block. There's no P, there's no D, and the S block maxes out at two, two electrons. So our first shell has two electrons. The second shell for neon is anything that has that coefficient of 2. You probably learned in middle school that the second shell can hold eight electrons. Two and six are both in the second shell. Neon has eight electrons in that second shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In my drawing, you can't tell which of the electrons are in the S and which are in the P subshell, but that's okay, you don't need to. The S and the P added together are always eight. The S can hold two electrons, the P can hold six. In total, that's eight electrons. Notice I did neon, it's a noble gas. Its outermost shell is full. That's what makes all of the noble gases special. That's why we can use them as part of the noble gas shortcut. They have a full outer shell. They don't want to gain or lose any electrons. I tend to um, personify atoms, it works. Noble gases are totally happy. They don't want to gain or lose. They're stable. Their shell is full. If we look at something different, like um, nitrogen. Nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So nitrogen would have still two electrons in that first shell, but only five in the outermost shell. So now this is the picture of nitrogen. Two in the innermost shell, one, two, three, four, five in the outermost shell, we call that the valence shell. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. What it wants is to be stable. It wants to have a full outermost shell, and it can do that by either gaining or losing electrons. Thinking through it, is it faster to lose all five or to gain three more and be at a full shell of eight? it's gonna be faster to gain three more. So on your periodic table at the top, you probably of this column have a minus three root. Nitrogen likes to be a minus three ion. Since electrons are negative, gaining more electrons makes the atom more negative. To become full, nitrogen needs to gain one, two, three electrons. That's why it's a minus three charge. You don't have to be able to draw this picture. Um, but when we do start talking about ions, know that a lot of the ions that exist, unless we're talking about transition metal, the ions that exist exist because we're trying to get to a full shell. If we're looking at something like boron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, it starts with only three electrons in its outermost shell, one, two, three. So rather than having to gain five, it's going to be easier for boron to lose three electrons. That's why boron is a plus three. Okay. Um, anytime we're gaining or losing electrons, it's going to be from the outermost shell. 
whatever coefficient is the largest is the outermost shell. If we look at something like iron, which is a transition metal, and I'll use the shortcut here, argon, 4s23d6. Remember that these are the shell numbers. If we're drawing a picture, nucleus, first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell. The order I write them in, the periodic table guides me to use, but the actual outermost shell here would be the fourth shell. So if I'm gonna take electrons away from iron, it's gonna be from here, not from there. 